Hi guys, um, one of my students gave me this question and I thought rather than going through it 20 times, I would just make a video so I only have to go through it once. So I hope this video helps you and so let's get to it. In the diagram below, a two kilo rock is resting 10 meters up a 40 degree inclined plane. First part, part A. If there is no friction, what will be the acceleration of the block down the incline once it is released? Okay, so to do this, we're going to have to draw a, an acceleration or a force triangle. So to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to draw the force due to gravity, which goes straight down through the rock's center of gravity, center of mass, sorry. And so we have so that is going to be the acceleration due to gravity. And what we're also going to have is we're going to have the, and this is going to have a component down the incline. So what we're gonna do is, oh, first we're gonna get a straight line. And this is gonna have a component down the incline. Cool. And then you can connect the two if you like. And that is a right angle. And this here, that angle is equal to 40 degrees. So let's get in on to question one. Question A, sorry. So what we can do is we can fill in the parts we know. We know the acceleration due to gravity straight down is going to be 9.8 meters a second. And we are looking for the component of this going down the slope. So let's just call this X. So because this is a right angle triangle, we can use simple trigonometry. So we can just say X is going to equal 9.8 times the sine of 40 degrees. And that is equal to 6.3 meters per second to the negative two. So that wasn't too difficult at all. So that's the first part of part A done. Now the second part, what will be its speed at the bottom of the incline? Okay, so the formula we're gonna use here is the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times the distance. Now, we're looking for V squared, so we're gonna have V squared is equal to U, which it starts at rest, so it's gonna be zero squared plus two times, and we know the acceleration down the slope is 6.3, and the distance is 10, 10 meters. So that's 63,126. So V is going to be equal to the square root of 126, which like 121 is 11, so it's just gonna be a little bit more than 11. Hang on, yep. And that's because that's velocity, that's to the negative one. So part A isn't, very complicated at all. So here is our component of acceleration due to gravity down the slope, and here is our final velocity at the bottom of the slope down here somewhere. Okay, so draw a line. Let's work out, let's have a look at what they're asking for B. Okay, so if the coefficient of friction is 0 0.3, now the coefficient 
of friction is a uh, value that shows the relationship between the force of friction between the slope and the object and the normal force provided but that or well the normal force that is between the two objects so the incline and the rock so we have a um, coefficient of friction which we some we denote like this is equal to 0 0.3 now what that basically means is the the amount of friction that we're going to get is going to be equal to 30% of the normal force which the normal force is the force that is perpendicular to the slope so if we have the normal force on this one is going to be out here so that's our force normal there so although it's not very easy to see on my diagram um, this component of the acceleration due to gravity is going to be equal to this normal force here we'll call it F normal so this also is going to be F normal down here that's supposed to be a lowercase n anyway so first of all what we've got to do is we've got to calculate the component of acceleration in this force normal direction so the way we're going to do that is we'll just call this a normal is going to be equal to 9.8 the acceleration due to gravity and because fn is the adjacent side we're going to use cosine of the angle that we are given And if we multiply that by, so then we can just work out the force normal is our, we can go, this is going to be our rock's mass times acceleration normal, which is equal to two times the acceleration in the normal direction, which is equal to 15 newtons. So that's the force normal is equal to 15 newtons. Okay, so the frictional force then between the rock and the plane, I'll just change colour for a second, make it easier to see what I'm doing. So the force of friction is equal to this mu character times the force normal, which in this case is 0 0.3 times 15, which is equal to 4.5 newtons. And that's going to be in the opposite direction to the motion of the rock. Okay, so what we're going to have as well is we're going to work because what we're going to have to try and work is our resulting force so the force generated by the acceleration down the plane minus the force of friction so the force generated of because of the acceleration down the plane is going is equal to ma which is equal to 2 times acceleration which we worked out in part a which was 6.3, this is without friction, which is equal to 12.6. And then our resultant force is going to equal 12.6, subtract 4.5, and that equals 8.1 newtons great so what we then have to do is we know that this is going to be the force accelerating it down the down the slope so what we're going to do now is we can say we know that this is one of the most common formulas in 
high school physics. So because we know force is equal to mass times acceleration, from that we can deduce that acceleration is going to be equal to force divided by mass. So in this case, we have a, a resultant force of 8.1, and we have a mass of 2. So 8.1 divided by 2 is equal to 4.05 meters per second to the negative 2. Great. And what will be its speed at the bottom of the incline? Well, like the other part of the question, part A, we're going to be using the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the distance. So if we enter in our values, we've got the final velocity squared is equal to 0 squared plus 2 times 4.05 times 10. So we have v squared running out of space. v squared is going to be 4.05 times 2 times 10 is 81. So therefore the final velocity at the bottom of the hill is going to be equal to the square root of 81 which is equal to 9 meters per second to the negative 1. Now let me just separate that bit of working out there so don't get confused. So, and that is our final answer for B. So, basically, if we go through it quickly together, what we start with is we start by working out to work out the acceleration of the block down the hill if we are in a zero friction environment, what we do is we figure out the component of the gravitational acceleration in the direction of the incline. And to do that, we do draw a force triangle with the acceleration to due to gravity is always going to be on our hypotenuse. Okay. Once we've got that, we can use a little bit of simple trigonometry to solve for the unknown side. It then asked us what its speed would be at the bottom of the incline. And so the way the formula that presented itself as the easiest to use was this one, where we could because we had all the variables that it required. Because our initial velocity is zero, we only needed the acceleration and the distance, which we had after working out the first part, we had both. So B was a little bit more tricky because it gave us a coefficient of friction. Now, again, friction, the coefficient of friction is the relationship between the force of friction between the two objects and the normal force. So basically, a coefficient of friction of 0 0.3 means that the force of friction is going to be 30% of the normal force that is exerted of, by the plane onto the object. So, once we worked out what the force normal was, which we did using, again, a little bit of simple trigonometry, we then had to multiply it by the coefficient of friction to find the force due to friction that will be working in the opposite direction to the rock's motion. We then had to work out the force that would be generated in a zero friction environment, so the maximum amount of force, which was 12.6 newtons. We then took away the force of friction because they're working in opposite directions, so you're, they're not going to be additive, they're going to be destructive. So, And that gave us a resultant force of 8.1 newtons. After we've done that, what we then had to do is we had to use the relationship force equals mass times acceleration, but we're going to rearrange it to find out the acceleration of the body with a um, friction coefficient of coefficient of friction, sorry, of 0 0.3. Now, if this coefficient of friction increased, you would see the acceleration here decrease because it means there'd be a higher, a larger force in the opposite direction. So what the, we then did is once we worked out the acceleration um, with 
in a friction environment, we then use the same formula again, but just inputting the new acceleration number to solve for the final velocity, which we worked out to be nine meters a second. So I hope that video helped. And um, if you have any problems, make sure you uh, hit us up. But if not, I'll see you here next time. Thanks.